I would like to thank one of my subscribers, P. Duell, for this story. FBI director defends remark that Chinese people in U.S. pose threat. Now, as you know, in the news lately, there's been a lot of friction going on between China and the U.S. And, you know, we all saw the stories from Rex Tillerson's Africa trip before he was fired. He was going around bad mouthing China to all of the different presidents over there in Africa. And then, of course, you know, there's been accusations going back and forth between the U.S. and China over all of the fentanyl that has been coming into the country. Um, you know, China was trying to buy the U.S. stock exchange in Chicago. And not to mention there's trade wars now going on between the U.S. and China. So it's been pretty fierce between the two countries. Now you have the new FBI director coming out against China, saying that the people here in the U.S. pose a danger, which is true. You know, don't think that with all the trafficking of drugs coming into the country, that many of these Chinese citizens are not directly involved in that, because they are. Just like we have Mexican Americans in this country, and some of them are involved in the trafficking of drugs coming across from Mexico into the U.S. So these citizens are not as squeaky clean as you think. Many of them are heavily involved in illegal activity, too. So I'm going to play the video on this, and you're going to hear some of the things that He's going to say, you know, not to mention that China has been doing a lot of interfering in businesses, too, in the U.S. But I'm going to go ahead and play the video so you can hear this in his very own words. We're in the director's office. Um, is this where you spend most of your time? And do people come to you or do you go to them? Uh, it varies. I probably spend uh, a certain amount of time here, but I'm on the move a fair amount, actually. I mean, I'm really trying to get. Uh, to all 56 field offices by the end of this calendar year. Did you come in with any specific priorities in mind and have you had obstacles in trying to pursue them? Uh, you know, my priority, first, my first and foremost priority was to make sure that everybody gets back to focusing on the mission and on the work and on the importance of our process and our rules and our core value and to try to bring some stability and calm to the organization. Uh, now, you said earlier that one of your missions was to uh, get the FBI back on track. Are you concerned that the reputation of the FBI has suffered? You know, reputation is an interesting thing. Some people use the word brand. Uh, I look at our brand, and there are a lot of opinions that are there about the FBI, but the, the brand that I think matters is the brand that the FBI has with juries when one of our agents takes the stand. Uh, the, the brand that our agents have when they take a search warrant or an arrest warrant to a magistrate judge, the brand when a prosecutor is trying to decide who they want to investigate a case with them, uh, the brand that uh, we have with victims and their families. I think our brand with those people is pretty darn strong. This hall of honor, what comes to mind at a place like this for you? Well, I think it's a sober reminder uh, of how much risk all of our agents take. And they leave the morning, they leave their families knowing that it could be their last day. And so I think it's important for us to remember that these are people who made the ultimate sacrifice. Can you tell us how many open investigations you have involving potential terror cases, ISIS or other foreign directed uh, terrorists? We have uh, over a thousand or around a thousand ISIS related investigations. We have around a thousand, what I would call homegrown violent extremists, which are basically people here inspired by the various global jihadist movements, uh, to commit terrorist acts. 
we have about another thousand of domestic terrorism investigations, which cover the waterfront from everything from white supremacists all the way to anarchists and everything in between. Uh, so these are very active investigations. We have them in all 50 states. This isn't small towns. It's not just big cities. Um, and it's a real problem. Moving on to the subject of espionage, you told the Senate Intelligence Committee recently that China presents, these are your words, a whole of society threat to the U.S. What did you mean by that? The FBI's role is to try to protect America's vital assets, both military and state secrets, as well as trade secrets. Uh, and in our experience, there is no nation that targets America's assets more aggressively than the Chinese government. And the Chinese government works hand in hand with Chinese companies uh, and others to do everything they can through all sorts of means to try to steal our trade secrets, our uh, economic assets. It involves things as varied as efforts to gain and steal trade secrets uh, related to corn seeds in Iowa all the way to control systems for wind turbines in Massachusetts. Uh, and it's a real issue, and it ultimately is going to have a real impact on American jobs, American businesses, and American consumers. What about violent crime? What is your sense? Are we seeing an increase now in the violent crime rate? You know, over the years of 2015 and 2016, there was a very significant increase in violent crime. Uh, you know, I think it's roughly 4%. Now, before, you know, you kind of tune out 4%, understand that in a country our size, a 4% increase in violent crime is essentially equivalent to about 50,000 people. So try to imagine Yankee Stadium sold out full of violent crime victims. And that's the difference from one year to the next. And then imagine each one of those people has a family, has loved ones, um, and it's a serious issue. You know, this is a 10 year gig. Do you intend to stay the whole 10 years? That's the goal. Uh, you know, I will say it took me about five seconds walking back into the Hoover building uh, to remember how much I missed the mission. I hope at the moment, all I am is focused on trying to see if I can uh, make this place even better than when I found it. Mr. Director, thank you very much. Thank you. Oikos, triple zero, Greek, non-fat yogurt, gives me 15 grams of protein and zero okay. added sugar. Whether I'm on the field or off. Oh, I can't stand these commercials. Anyway, um, as you can see, the Asian community, they're very upset with the FBI director and they, they um, don't like the fact that they are being looked at as a threat. But you know what, with the climate that's going on between the US and China at this point, you can just anticipate this is definitely gonna get worse. So anytime, um, this Chris Ray has his eye on them, you can best believe they are going to start watching the Chinese community very closely. And I believe they always have all along. You know, I remember years ago when white people used to make the accusation that Dr. King was communist, like that was horrifying. Well, I never paid attention to them saying that about Dr. King, and here's why. If America was really concerned about communism, then why did they let all these Chinese people come in here who are from communist China and set up a Chinatown in every major city in this country? So don't come to me talking about you're bothered by communism. If you were really bothered by that, you would never have allowed that, but you did. So when you say those kind of things to me, it just falls upon deaf ears. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell twice and join me on Black Junction TV and blackspot.com. Peace, family.